members of the jury, ask yourselves if it is remotely credible that it is simply a coincidence that the description which Marilyn Spark gave of her attacker precisely fitted the man who owned the van in which the attack was carried out. Can you really believe that the discovery of a sweater in Brian Morton's house, the sweater described by Marilyn Spark as having been worn by her attacker, is yet another coincidence? It's not a case of being a bit mixed up or not getting every detail quite right. It's a case of these confessions to the attack on Marilyn Spark being simply and utterly incredible, made each of them by people who are not there, made to assist Brian Morton to conceal the real truth of his guilt, made to order, made to his order. Now, who would have done that? The three men who had no opportunity for so doing? and who went to the police with it firmly in mind to admit to a crime which the prosecution say they did not commit. Or this defendant, who had every opportunity and every motive. When in this hugely complex mass of facts, one fact shines through, and that is the fact Marilyn Sparks' positive identification of this defendant as her attacker. Everything else in this case flows from that correct identification. The van, his van. A sweater found in his house, the box in his office. The false confessions of the three men to benefit him and him alone. For these reasons, members of the jury, you may have little difficulty in being certain that he is guilty of each of the three attacks. The Crown have invited you to rely on Marilyn Sparks' identification of the defendant. And yet you have had demonstrated to you an occasion when she got it wrong. Marilyn Spark falsely identified a man in the street as Brian Andrew Morton. Members of the jury, how can the Crown say that Marilyn Spark is a reliable witness? How can you be sure that her identification was ever correct? Well, suppose that Brian Morton had not been at his solicitor's office when Ms. Spark claimed to have seen him. Doesn't bear thinking about, does it? Well, the reality is that Marilyn Spark is, in fact, a thoroughly unreliable witness. As I'm afraid to say, you would expect from someone who earns her living by prostitution. I was telling the truth, you bastards! This man is a killer! A disgusting animal! Science in court! Because there is no forensic evidence linking Brian Andrew Morton to any of the victims or the weapons whose common use in all of these offences is a central element of the Crown's case, my learned friend has therefore told you that Brian Andrew Morton must be guilty. Well, we submit that such an argument is wholly nonsensical. Foreman, please stand. Mr. Foreman, please answer this question, yes or no. Have you reached verdicts on each count on which you are all agreed? Yes. On the first count, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty of the murder of Susan Zoe Harrow? 
not guilty. Silence, please. On count two, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty of the murder of Carol Alexandra Lennox? Not guilty. Silence in court. On count three, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty of the attempted murder of Marilyn Spark? Not guilty. On count four, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty of conspiring to pervert the course of justice? Not guilty. And these are the verdicts of you all? They are. Sunday. Thank <laughs> you. 